months into the coronavirus pandemic, 43 states experiencing surges in infection rates. So the U.S. has surpassed 10 million confirmed COVID cases. That's one fifth of the 50 million infections worldwide. More than 237,000 Americans have died. News of a vaccine bringing some hope. But right now, how can we stop the spread? For that, we're checking in with Dr. Syra Madad, a leader in epidemiologist in public health and special pathogens preparedness and response. Good morning to you, doctor. Thank you for being here this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, doctor, let's begin with what Pfizer released yesterday, this information about their vaccine, which the CEO claims is 90 percent effective. What do you know about the vaccine? Is this promising news moving forward? So first, you know, I think that this is certainly a very good day for public health and science. Any good, any good news is, is something that we all want to hear amidst this uh, ongoing uh, bad, uh, you know, pandemic that we're in that's only going to get worse. Um, I think that the 90 percent is certainly uh, very pleasantly alarming to many of us, especially since FDA put the bar as, uh, you know, approving a vaccine that's 50 percent effective. Mm -hmm. But this is only an interim analysis. This is just a press release. We don't actually have data right. to, to see, you know, what's actually going on. But at the, at the face value, it's certainly good news. And so when a vaccine is finally approved, right, the big question that so many have is will the public health system be involved in distributing it? Who gets it first? Yeah, so in terms of who's going to be prioritized, that information is going to be coming from the federal government. And we already have an indication through some of these uh, publications that have been made available. It's going to be healthcare workers and first responders and those high, highest risk for severe illness that's going to get it first. And there's going to be additional categories after that. The real problem is where rubber meets the road. And what I mean by that is how we're going to actually operationalize the distribution and administration. So from the time you get the vaccine to the time you're going to actually have it in individuals' arms, that's going to be a huge logistic logistical lift for healthcare systems and public health in general. So there's a lot yeah. of financial support that needs to go behind it and a lot more planning. So doctor, we're seeing an uptick in areas, surges in the Midwest, but over in New Jersey as well. We had the health commissioner on, you're seeing big numbers there. Doctors like yourself warned that a second wave was coming in the winter time, the fall and the winter. Is this a surprise to you? And will, and not to be an alarmist, will it get worse as the winter months go on? So is this a surprise? Absolutely not. This is something that we've anticipated. We knew it was going to get worse because if you look at some of the factors that's influencing the rise of the cases today, uh, you know, it's just it's all the stuff that we've been talking about. It's the fact that it's, you know, people are more congregating indoors. It's this pandemic fatigue. More people are trying to move around. Holiday season is upon us. So there's a lot of factors that are, is unfortunately working against us. We still don't have the the resources and the infrastructure we need to be able to get uh, this virus under control. And so what we need to do is have good surveillance systems. We need more mask uh, uh, compliance. We need to make sure that no one wants to do, uh, you know, mass shelter in place or lockdowns. So instead of that, we need to prioritize those activities that are driving the transmission, yeah. like your gatherings and, uh, you know, uh, do that. And before I get to these five things, I just want to point out you were in a Netflix documentary series called Pandemic, How to Prevent an Outbreak. And in that documentary, I got to say it was fascinating. I watched it early on. It was filmed before coronavirus, but a lot of the similarities do exist right now. How do you think the country, New York City in particular, were prepared knowing what you did then? Well, you know, I think that there was a lot of things working against us, even this pandemic very early on. We were blinded by the fact uh, of knowing how many cases we had uh, in the country because of the whole testing fiasco. So and, and then the whole politicalization and, and, you know, just generally no federal leadership. So there was a lot that no one has could have anticipated that we face in this pandemic. Things that we thought we would have as a foundation, as a bedrock, because, you know, this is not our first pandemic as a nation. We just didn't have uh, in right. this current response. And so it's very unfortunate how things are playing out. And unfortunately, I do think that we're going to have another 100,000 Americans die before mm. end of this year because of just the lack of response that we're seeing nationally. Every state is on its own. Some states are doing better than others, uh, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. We're going to see increased numbers of hospitalizations, cases and death, you know, coming into the fall and winter. That's a tough number to hear. Doctor, we have uh, about a minute left. Let's go through the five things you want to talk about here. These tips. I know we talk about them a lot, but let's hammer them home. Yeah, so I think some of my high level tips for just, you know, the American people is first, everybody should have their emergency kit ready. You know, if we're going to, we may, uh, depending on where you're living, you're going to, you may have hyper local responses where you have to shelter in place for a certain period of time. So have a two week supply of, you know, some of your emergency essential items, making sure that you're continuously staying informed, going to credible sources, having your social bubble, you know, everybody wants that human interaction. And so we want to limit as many people you're uh, interacting with that are non-household. So begin thinking about who you want in your social bubble, you know, just continue to work on your own health. And so is a very stressful situation 
everybody's in it together, but really making sure that you looking at the positive as well. A lot of negativity out there. There's a lot of bad news. We understand that. We know that, that but we want to make sure that people also get the, the mental health and the relief that they also need. But know that we're all in it together and we're going to get past this and we'll be light at the end of the tunnel. Testing and tracing. I want to touch upon it real quick. We heard from New Jersey, which was surprising today. 60% of people say they don't want to answer the contact tracers your advice for them some fears that people have about giving their personal information especially if if they're um you know not from the area or whatnot what do you say so first this is completely secure secure this is completely private and your information is not going to be shared with any third party everybody has a role to play in this pandemic if you're not going to pick up the call then that may cause uh, then the the outbreak is going to kind of continue to perpetuate so it's really important that if you get a call from contact tracers you pick up you do the whole case investigation you give contacts that you may have uh, ex you've been exposed to um, and really making sure that we have, uh, you know, we're following public health guidance. So really important. Everybody has a role to play. This information is secure. We know there's a lot of anti-immigration rhetoric that's been spewing yes. out for years now, but this is th this is a public health emergency. None of, none of this is going to, uh, it's, it's not a part of that whole immigration policy that the federal government has. This is more of a public health response. Immigration status not going to be asked when they get that call. Dr. Syra Madad, thank you for coming on this morning. You are a wealth of knowledge. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.